compression ratio in an engine is a big factor when it comes to horsepower. You know, you wanna have good compression. The more compression, the more power you have. So, let's go calculate this engine. Let's see what we've got. Let me show you. Welcome to Nick's Garage, and I'm Nick. And I wanna do two things here on this video. I wanna tell you guys how to measure compression ratio in an engine, and also why this particular 33 Roadrunner engine that came out of this beautiful 70 Roadrunner convertible did not have any power. This engine was built by someone else in the States, somewhere in California, where Theo from Sydney, Australia bought this car from. He had it shipped here for us to build him an engine, also install air conditioning, a six pack, and frame connectors and so forth, and maybe power windows. But the dilemma of this 33 engine, if you guys go on our playlist, if you check our previous videos, that you've seen I've road tested this car and it didn't make much power. The question came up and said to me, someone asked me, maybe the engine was not tuned right. Yes, it is an original 33 matching number engine from the factory. And I'm gonna tell you guys, this engine's been re-overhauled by somebody else, but I'm gonna go into little details to tell you what the real compression ratio actually is in this engine before we had it removed out of the car. Compression ratio in an engine is a big factor when it comes to horsepower. You know, you wanna have good compression. The more compression, the more power you have. In this case, it's a very low compression motor, and I wanna show you guys the reason why. You know, from the factory, this engine is 9.5 compression ratio with the original pistons and a 20 thou head gasket with an 88 cc chamber. But when this engine was rebuilt, when you buy aftermarket pistons off the shelf, like so, like this one here, which is 30 overboard, it's way below the deck. The higher the piston is to the deck, the more compression you have. But let's take here this for example. When I build a race motor or a hot muscle car engine, I always bring the piston to the deck, zero deck. In this case, it is not, it's not being decked. So here I'm gonna show you with this particular piston what we have. Come and take a look. Okay, we zero deck the uh, bridge. And now what we gotta do is bring the piston to top that center, like so. We clean the deck, put our bridge over. We gotta make sure we got it top that center, like so. Watch that down indicator, you guys. Where it stops and turns direction is your maximum height, which is right there. Okay, now let's put the gauge back to zero. And there you have it, which is zero. And now we're gonna bring it over the piston and I wanna tell you how far down inside the cylinder it is. Watch this. Take a good look. Here we go. If you guys look at it real closely, we got 50, 60, 70, 73, 73 thou, 74 thou. And matter of fact, I measured all four corners. If you take a good look, all four pistons are in. There's one, there's the other side. I've measured all four corners. They're all between 73 and 75 thou below the deck. So now we know that as a factor. Second, this is the gasket that I had removed from the engine where we built it. This is practically a 44 thou head gasket thickness. Don't forget, this takes also volume. So let's consider this 44 thou. This is the head gasket that was in there. The next thing we need to know is, so now we have the deck height, we know the thickness of the head gasket. Also, not only the thickness, you also have to know the bore diameter of the head gasket, like so. This is something like a 4.415 or so. Here it is, something like that, you see? There you go. Okay, let's say 412, 415. Anyways, it's roughly there. And then, at the same time, we gotta know the CC, the chamber, and the cylinder head. Now I know that that cylinder head has not been machined or milled or planed down. And it's supposed to be from the factory 88 CC. So I'm gonna do a test just to show you guys how we measure CC in a cylinder head. Here we have the cylinder head that belongs to the uh, 383 Roadrunner. I have the valves closed, I cleaned the deck, I installed the spark plug. So now we gotta fill it up with uh, liquid, which is 50% alcohol, 
50% water. So we're gonna bring it up to the zero mark, exactly, like so. You wanna make sure you got 200 cc. We're gonna put a plate to hold the water in place, like so. I like using this smelling uh, thick oil, which works great for me. It makes a good seal, like so. You gotta make sure it's nice and clean so this thing sticks, and we wanna make sure it doesn't leak. You put it over the chamber, like so. There we go. We have it tilted a bit, so the air goes travels right up to the tip. So there, here we go. There we have it at the zero mark. And now whatever liquid fills up in there is the equal amount of cc's in the chamber. You guys ready? Here we go. We gotta make sure there's no air bubbles trapped inside. Put it over here. Okay, let's measure it right now. As you can see, the chamber is filled flat. And there we go. Here we go. 75, 80, 85. If you look at it good, you guys, it reads 88 cc. Am I correct? If not, it's very close. So here we have it. Now we know that the chamber is a factory chamber of 88 cc. This head has not been milled down. It is the original cylinder head to this engine. Let's put this factor on our chart, which I've made over here. So now that we know the chamber, volume of the chamber is 88 cc. 88 cc. So let me give you guys a description right here. Now we know that the bore size is a 4250 is a standard bore, but since it's 30 oversized, it's a 4.280 bore. The piston stroke on a 3D3 is a 3.375 stroke. Then you have to measure the head gasket bore diameter, which is a 4.415, which is the opening on the head gasket. Okay, like so, 4.415. Then you also have a head gasket thickness, like so. Compressed thickness. This is the gasket that came out of the engine. If you're looking at it like this, you got roughly 44 thou, okay? There you go. So we know that the head gasket out of this engine was 44 thou. We also just did the chamber, which is 88 cc. Now the piston design, is it a dome? Is it a dish? No, it's a flat piston. So there is no cc's to remove or add because if it's a dome or a dish, you subtract. So we all can see that it is a flat piston, like so. Here it is, it's a flat piston. And if you guys could look very, very good, very well, look at this. It's way below the deck. And I'm gonna show you the last piston at the same time. Let me bring up the other piston. Take a good look. If you guys have a good eye, check out the last piston, how far up it goes. Check it out. It goes just as much as the first piston. There you go, you see it? That's about 75,000. There you go, right there. So I've measured all four corners and I got practically the same thing. Now don't forget, this engine was never decked. Then, so we have a piston dome, which is not a dome or a, or a dish, so it's flat at zero. Then we have a deck clearance of 73 to 75 thou below the deck. Now, let's calculate the compression ratio. Now, factory compression ratio on a 3D3 Roadrunner engine or Super Commando or 3D3 Magnum, that equals 9.5 on a 1970 3 3 High performance engine, Magnum 3D3, whatever it is, or Super Command, like I said earlier. The factory compression ratio of the four barrel 3D3 is 9.5 to 1. So let's go calculate this engine and see what we've got. Let me show you. There's a few sites, but this is one of my favorites. This is what I use, and I want to show you guys what the results are. I've calculated all this 
in here. And the results I got were right here, 8.2, far away from the factory 9.5. So now that we got the results, we are gonna mark it, 8.221. There's our compression ratio, which equals no power. Like I said earlier, the factory compression ratio is 9.5 to 1. But 8.2, that's pretty low for compression for a muscle car engine. And then let me tell you another thing. When a lot of people buy pistons off the shelf, what's very, very important is this. Let me show you guys. You know, there's so many piston manufacturers out there. The most important thing is compression height. So look for the highest or biggest number on the compression height for less deck clearance. In other words, you want to find a pin and the deck further away. So the compression height is from the center of the pin to the top of the piston, like so. For example, this could be a 1.920 or whatever, like so, you see that? The bigger the number, the higher the deck, the higher the piston is closer to the deck, and for that reason, you plane the deck a lot less. You don't wanna plane the deck too much because you weaken the block. You wanna remove as little as possible. So what you try to find on the market is the piston with the highest compression distance or compression height number. So don't forget that. This is what I'm doing in this case right now for Theo. I'm looking for a piston aftermarket, 30 over, just like it is right now, 30 over. I'm just gonna check the cylinders are perfectly round before I do anything. And I wanna find a piston as high as I can so I can only deck it maybe 15, 18 tau. In this case, if I were to leave these pistons in there, I gotta deck the block 75 tau. That's a way too much. It's gonna weaken the block. So we don't wanna go there. So I'm gonna look out for another set of pistons, which I'm on the look for right now. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys why this engine had no power. So if you look at it, what was the compression in the cylinder pressure? Maybe 120, 110, who knows? Anyways, it is an older uh, restoration. It's also an older rebuild. I don't know when. And also had a factory cam, nothing very special. Had a single roller timing chain and a hydraulic flat top, but nothing very uh, special. The windage tray was missing. So our job is to do right now is make this a true blue 383 Roadrunner or Super Commando engine and make at least 400 or 400 plus horsepower with the same intake, the same cast iron manifolds. So I wanted to keep it as a matching number, which it is. I want to deliver it to Theo with some muscle in it and be happy, or should I say, deliver it with a real muscle. Uh, by the way, it doesn't have a sure grip. We have to add one. That is the reason why only one wheel was spinning when I did that video shot when I took it for a road test. Now that it's all said and done, when this engine is ready and goes on a dyno, stay tuned for the video, which is gonna be up in the future. So let me get those pistons on order, get this engine put together, do the work, and get it going. So in the meantime, if you guys wanna know how to measure compression ratio, it's a very easy factor, and there you have it. And when the factory built these engines, I know as a fact that when you have a true blue Chrysler piston in the block, usually it's 20, 25 thou below the deck, the factory pistons. This is an aftermarket piston. It's an average of 75 thou below the deck, which is a no good piston. But what you get from Chrysler is a piston that is usually below the deck of 20, 25. And at the same time, it doesn't come with this gasket that was supplied by this engine. Factory head gasket, which is a shim, steel gasket, which is average 20 thou, which is half the thickness, even less than half the thickness of this. And by the way, every engine I built for 43.3, these are the gasket I use, the 20 thou steel shim head gasket, and they do the job for me, unless it's an aluminum head, and then I use a Felpro. But when it comes to a cast iron head, this is the steel head gasket I use. So a thinner gasket also boosts the compression ratio. Also, with the piston higher up in the deck, helps you boost the compression ratio. So there you have it, you guys. Now that you've seen how to do a, how to calculate compression ratio, I just wanted to build it the correct way, make some more power with it. So stay tuned for a future buildup on this engine. And thanks for watching us here on Nick's Garage. Thanks everyone for watching this special bonus episode of Nick's Garage. Make sure you're subscribed to catch all the action from the shop. See you next time. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Nick's Garage.
And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.